Hey everybody, this is Aaron Murakami with a and Electronic Media at eMediaPress.com and the Energy Science and Technology Conference at EnergyScienceConference.com and we have a new website which is Vril.io that is V-R-I-L.io and little by little all the physical products are going to be uh, put on that page uh, which is dedicated to the actual hardware uh, that's the Bedini RPX sideband generator this uh, Lakovsky multi-wave oscillator uh, that's all going to be on the website as well as uh, several other products and probably by the end of 2020 there's probably going to be about a dozen uh, different uh, products on there uh, that's uh, readily available for purchase. Uh, what I want to cover in this segment right here is what the difference is between the Tesla and the Lakovsky setup. So right here this PM this box just stands for the pulse modulator um, that's these cases right here which has a spark gap it has a high voltage transformer, the chokes, it has the uh, uh, all the capacitors and parallel and series and so forth and then that outputs to some uh, uh, to a primary which steps up the voltage and is sent to these concentric ring antennas so that pulse modulator right there essentially has two outputs which are capacitors there's actually a whole bunch of capacitors in series but there's also in parallel spark gap and all that but for simplicity's sake I'm just showing the two uh, the connection to the pulse modulator as far as the capacitor output and so whether it's the Tesla or the Lakovsky method you can use the same pulse modulator for both uh, you just have to change the coil arrangement and how it's wired up so in this right here you see the two outputs of these uh, capacitors and these are operating at a high frequency uh, the system is tuned most of the Lakovsky MWOs are tuned from about 700 kilohertz up to about uh, close to 1 megahertz and the different variations with the different coil uh, windings and so forth there's a lot of different parameters to take into uh, account but for the most part it's from 700 up to about maybe 950 you know close to 1 megahertz which is pretty much the entire AM radio band but when you have the spark gap these bursts are creating uh, additional uh, radio frequencies uh, which are also part of the uh, the method but in any case, what you see here is that these two capacitors are alternating really rapidly at a very high frequency back and forth at a high voltage, whatever the voltage uh, is of the um, high voltage transformer inside the unit. They can be between, you know, perhaps 6,000 maybe at minimum, all the way up to 15,000 uh, volts for a high voltage transformer. Um, this coil right here represents the primary, which are going to be uh, fewer turns and fatter wire and that's basically the input of what these capacitor discharges are going to, bouncing back and forth, uh, uh, alternating back and forth, oscillating really, really fast. Um, this is a center tap on that primary, grounding it to the chassis case, and this is just good practice, and this would be called a balanced system. So out each end of the primary, we are feeding secondary, which are really uh, skinny wire, but a lot of turns, and you'll see pictures of all this and what that does is it steps that voltage up from whatever the high voltage already is going into the primary steps it up even higher and on these MWO systems they can be between maybe 250 300,000 volts uh, easily is what's coming out of the ends of these secondaries and then that feeds these capacitor rings which are not shorted together in a closed loop they're open with that gap and they're concentric and each uh, all 12 rings whatever variation of ring there happens to be we use 12 uh, Lakovsky used 12 in many of his uh, renditions and each ring is not electrically connected to each other they're just capacitively connected which means um, there's a capacitance in between each ring but when they fire you can actually draw sparks from every single ring all the way down to the center it just gets less less and less uh, but the point is is this is basically the balanced arrangement and um, so what happens is if somebody is standing uh, in between here what happens is when this coil fires, uh, these dielectric lines are going to go from here straight over to this antenna because this is going to close the loop right here. And, in, and when this one fires in the opposite direction, it's going to find its way over to this antenna come here. So it's pretty much kind of a closed loop, so there's not really any leakage or broadcast ability when you have this arrangement because whatever's sent here is going to be captured here and, and vice versa. So somebody or any kind of subject or whatever that is between these antennas are receiving this oscill high, high speed uh, oscillating uh, electrostatic potential 
uh, there's a displacement current here which is different from conduct conduction current and so um, these are basically longitudinal waves so to speak or longitudinal impulses that are going back and forth and so they're not really faster than the speed of light but they're considered extra luminal because it's kind of outside of the light speed constraints and so as soon as one antenna fires these electrostatic lines these dielectric lines are actually instantaneously at the other, set, other side automatically. So in effect what it's doing is it's polarizing the ether in between here one way and then the opposite way, one way then the opposite way. So when you hear a lot of people talking about uh, scalar waves, this is kind of what they're referring to even though there really are no scalar waves. So the whole scalar concept that people apply to different you know, therapeutic devices or these Tesla style devices, whatever they happen to be, radionics and you name it, is that if I'm standing in this room right now and it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a magnitude of 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but there's no direction to the temperature. It's kind of omnipresent throughout this entire room, and it's just kind of a, you know, a static uh, uh, presence to that temperature. So the magnitude is maybe 75 Fahrenheit. There's no direction. That's what a scalar is. And being that that is what a scalar is, there's no scalar wave. Where's the wave? or the movement of that temperature in any particular direction for it to actually be, be like a wave, uh, there's not, there really isn't. So when people refer to that, this is what they're talking about is this longitudinal type of, um, these longitudinal so-called waves. Uh, now if we look at the Lakovsky circuit here, it's, it's similar, but there's a very distinct difference. And what that difference is, is each time the coils fire here from the capacitors, can be the identical pulse modulator, and what happens is, uh, for one, the primary coil is not center tapped. It's also not placed exactly halfway between both coils. So it's automatically it's no longer balanced. And being that it's not balanced, it's kind of a lopsided asymmetrical type of system for the most part. There's some balance to it, but it's not balanced like this. This is perfect balance, and this is a little bit kind of lopsided. And so, but the same thing happens here is that these capacitors alternately uh, fire back and forth and what happens is when this one fires it's going through the primary through this secondary and this antenna is emitting it and the path that it's going to take is over to this antenna back down through here but where it's ground you know to, to the opposite potential of this cap but simultaneously it's also finding a path to ground out here now this is a different ground from this symbol here which is a chassis ground which is just grounded to the chassis this is an earth rod connection, which means you actually go out in the yard and you pound like an eight foot rod, so you have a couple inches sticking out, and that's what you connect this to, which means one of the phases is uh, grounded, or I guess technically both phases are kind of grounded since um, that ground rod connection is actually connected to both uh, capacitors. doesn't really seem to make sense to be able to do that because if you walked up to a 110 volt outlet um, on your wall that you're normally sticking a three prong uh, device into, um, if you took one of those uh, straight prongs and then you grounded it, it would abs make absolutely no sense. But here's the reason for that. It's very specific and it's necessary for the Lakovsky method. So when this coil fires, what happens is that next time um, this is going to go here and then when this coil fires, it's going to go here because that's going to complete its own loop right here. Uh, finding it to this ground rod, but also finding it to the opposite uh, capacitor. Now here's where the difference is. As soon as somebody or something is in between these antennas on the Lakovsky unit and this person it has their feet on the ground, uh, they're grounded. And they are in contact essentially with this ground right here. Uh, not super, super conductive contact. You don't want to take a wire to your foot and metallically connect it to this ground, but nevertheless, you are grounded. Whether you have shoes, even with rubber soles, there's going to be some grounding there. And if you take shoes off and you have barefoot or socks sitting on the ground, you have an even better ground. But you're not metallically connected to this ground. But nevertheless, what happens is that roughly 50% of what leaves this antenna goes through the person to the opposite uh, antenna and vice versa. When the opposite one fires, it goes this way. So what happens is that you're still kind of getting this Tesla effect where the person is just kind of immersed in this, this rapidly oscillating field, electrostatic uh, field. Um, this person is experiencing that too, but there's something else that happens. Because of this ground rod, what happens is that 
some of this potential, roughly half of it makes it to the opposite antenna, and the other half actually is finding a path through the person down to this ground uh, earth rod, which means there's current moving from the earth up through that person. And when the opposite coil fires, it's going here, and then it's also going down too. So roughly half is being captured by each antenna, while roughly the other half is actually moving through the person and is, and is grounding. Okay, so what Lukowski was basically after is that, let's say that this is the ionosphere, way up in the sky, and in the upper atmosphere, and let's say that this is the Earth. And, um, you know, all, all life is down here uh, on the ground. So between the Earth and the ionosphere, there is roughly, you could say maybe a quarter million to maybe 350,000 volts, uh, depending on what reference you read. And so if you divide that per meter, you're looking at maybe about a couple hundred, a few, a few hundred volts per meter. And that can be up as high as maybe uh, 10,000 volts per meter if there's like a thunderstorm or something. So what happens is that this is positively charged, and you can say this is neutral. Uh, most people say negative. But what happens is that the ionospheric these electrostatic lines of flux are coming down to be grounded right here. Now it's not necessarily flowing, it's kind of like two capacitor plates that all life is evolving in, thriving and growing inside this field. And so if you look at this, what well, this is basically replicating at a very souped up level at a much higher voltage per meter and at a very high frequency is that you have the high voltage here moving through all whatever life form is right here uh, down to the ground and that happens at you know 700,000 to 1 million times per second cycles per second on the uh, you know basically in that AM range and in addition to that there's all these extra frequencies that are created by the spark gap bursts and what's happening at the antennas is that you know each antenna ring has a certain length which is going to correspond to a uh, a frequency of a certain wavelength or you could say fractional wavelength very very fractional and what's going to happen is that uh, all these different antenna rings are supposedly supposed to have their own unique frequency um, in reality and that's where the multi-wave kind of concept kind of comes from but these rings are coupled so closely together that not one single ring is able to really kind of resonate into their own uh, unique frequencies, but what happens is that um, it's basically like a life force generator replicating the earth ionosphere connection right here and this is what this makes, that's why this makes it unique compared to Tesla's method um, but if you read the literature of what Tesla was saying um, you know he's saying he gets inside this machine and it relaxes him and all this kind of stuff and a lot of the you know testimonials of what people are saying they're experiencing from these life force energy uh, benefits of these rapidly oscillating fields is that they're experiencing the exact same thing. I know I've witnessed it, I've experienced it. Um, there's a lot more that's going on with whatever is here between the antennas that I'm not really going to get into. This is just to show the difference basically between Lukowski uh, and Tesla and kind of what Lukowski was after and why it's necessary for this ground rod connection is basically to get the high voltage to move through whatever is in the middle here uh, down to an earth ground. And so uh, that concludes this particular segment.